The animation opens in Oakton City after Surly the Squirrel has defeated the evil raccoon and rescued some of his friends. The nut shop is out of business, so the rodents who live in the park now have access to sufficient food under the supervision of Surly. The animals spend most of their time in the basement of the nut shop, feasting on nuts and also processing some other foods with the machines which belong to the shop. Unlike in the past, when they used to scavenge for food and save it at the oak tree, there is plenty of food in the shop to carry them for years. Precious, the dog is also around as she now lives with the animals at the park. From a corner, Surly and his best friend, Buddy, sit and watch in satisfaction at the happy animals in the basement. Meanwhile, inside Liberty Park, Andy single-handedly teaches some young squirrels how to get food for themselves to survive as wild animals. But these young ones don't pay attention to her teachings, as all they can think about is the nut shop. They also don't see the need for her lectures when they could easily get food from the basement. After the class, the little ones run off to the nut shop where an eating contest is going on. Andy comes in some moments later and is shocked to see how valueless the nuts have become for the animals. She goes to Andy to scold him, and he hands her a Brazil nut to pacify her, but she politely declines his offer because she had vowed not to eat any supplies from the shop. At the heart of the city, the mayor of Oakton, a greedy man named Muldoon, sits in his office as he signs several permits which would generate profit for his pockets. He, however, reveals to his campaign members that he is not happy with the fact that Liberty Park isn't bringing him any profit. He then devises a plan in his head, as he sees no reason for such a large amount of land to not be monetized. The animals soon leave the nut shop to their abodes in the park to retire for the night. Andy still engages Surly in their argument as she complains that the animals aren't using their instinct to survive because they have free food. Suddenly, the nut shop explodes behind them and fire engulfs the entire building, sending it to the ground in ashes. The explosion was caused by the pressure from the boiler, which Mole forgot to reduce. The animals watch speechless as the firefighters arrive at the scene, and they wonder what they would do next. Andy comforts them, telling them that they would just have to return to their former routine of assembling to find food. But Surly is against this and tells the animals not to worry, as he would take it upon himself to find food. Andy tries to ensure that he knows what he's doing, but he isn't deterred and heads out with Buddy. The two friends head into the city and to several restaurants, but they are thrown out of some and also lose the food they found. Defeated, they return to the park in the morning to announce that there is no food, and this news terrifies the animals while Andy tries to calm them down. Concerned that Liberty Park never makes money, Mr. Muldoon, the unscrupulous mayor of Oakton City, decides to turn it into an amusement park that would be named Liberty Land. He addresses the press at the entrance of Liberty Park where he unveils the new project but is later interrupted by his ill-behaved daughter. Surly and Andy discover Muldoon's plot, but Surly doesn't take the proposal seriously until the big machines arrive at the park. The excavation kicks off and the animals become scared and scamper, but Surly convinces them to sabotage the construction workers' efforts to tear down the park. So, all the animals of the park cooperate and attack the construction workers, even damaging their equipment. Some animals also destroy the books, money, and also the restrooms meant for the workers. Buddy and Surly release a hive of bees on other workers, even Precious contributed to the fight. At the end of the day, the animals successfully send the workers running out of the park. The mayor gets notified about the revolt that the animals put up, and he vows to do all that he can to send them out of the park as they celebrate. The next day, he calls an animal extermination squad led to annihilate the animals. Surly becomes caught in one of the traps, but the animals collectively rescue him but are soon pursued by Muldoon's daughter's dog Frankie. This dog later falls in love with Precious, who pretends to be interested to save her friends. Later, the mayor's daughter takes Precious along with her back home as her new pet. The exterminators apply brutal measures against the animals as they are out to kill. As the animals run out, several explosions occur in the park and vehicles containing the building materials for the amusement park begin driving in. Outside the park, Surly and Buddy split ways with the other animals as they go to find Precious, while Andy mobilizes the other animals to go find a new park. Precious is taken to the mayor's house, where she is expected to act like a pet before she is fed. Meanwhile, Surly and Buddy, while searching for the mayor's house, run into a colony of territorial white mice led by Feng. Surly received numerous hits from Feng but later evades the mice who swear to kill them if they return to their territory. On the other end, Andy, Jimmy, Johnny, and Jamie find what seems to be a suitable park, 
but it turns out to be a golf course whose players almost get them killed. Surly and Buddy finally find Muldoon's mansion, and they gain entrance through the window of his office, after which they head into the house to find Precious. They later see her locked in a cage with Frankie, inside the bedroom of Muldoon's daughter, Heather. Surly unlocks the cage while Precious distracts Frankie and she later comes out. She calmly explains to the other dog that she is not interested in him like he thought and that she pretended to save her friends. Frankie is heartbroken as Precious turns to leave with Surly and Buddy, who then step on a toy that makes a sound, bringing Heather's attention to them. The little girl screams and begins running after the animals who run across the mansion. Heather's noise then alerts her father, who comes out of his office to check on his daughter. The animals move past him into his office to escape through the window. They successfully head out of the window, but Surly's recklessness causes Muldoon to shoot at Buddy, who falls off the balcony and falls unconscious. Terrified, Surly takes Buddy's unconscious body to the nut shop's remains, where Andy and the other animals are. Buddy is laid inside the shelter and things are not looking very bright for the animals as they have lost their homes. The new park which they intended to enter isn't safe for them and now, Buddy is unconscious. Surly stands over his friend's body and is joined by Andy, who asks him how he met Buddy. He narrates that he met him during a fierce hurricane when he was much younger. He saw Buddy outside, holding on to dear life, so he headed out into the hurricane to rescue him. But Surly fell unconscious during the hurricane and Buddy, in turn, held him down. Ever since then, they haven't left each other's side and have grown and gone on several adventures together. While the animals are mourning, the construction of the amusement park is in motion as the mayor plans on opening it as soon as possible. At where the animals are, Precious walks up to where Buddy lays and thanks him for rescuing her from the mayor's house. She licks his face as a sign of appreciation, and Buddy subconsciously wipes it off. Seeing this, Surly asks Precious to lick his entire body, which she does and Buddy wakes up from his coma. Surly hugs his friend and apologizes for putting his life at risk. Now, the animals look up to Surly for their next step of action, so he announces that they take back the park and they draw close to discuss their plan. The opening of the amusement park finally arrives, and Muldoon's invitation was strictly for the elites who financially funded his campaign. The animals, led by Surly, position themselves in their various units, waiting on the order to attack. The order comes through and the animals unleash their fury at the guests, as they fight them with food items and also, make them scared. Seeing what the animals are doing, Muldoon calls to the exterminators again to capture and get rid of the animals who have made a mess of his grand opening. The animal exterminators arrive at the park with their trucks and equipment and begin to capture the animals one after the other. The animals do their best to fight back, but they are all overpowered and out inside cages. Buddy is also captured, and Surly and Andy watch from a pole in defeat. Andy tries to encourage Surly, telling him that they can still fight back, but the male squirrel knows better than to go against the humans alone. So, he asks Andy to protect herself, and he runs off into the streets of the city while Andy is shot with a dart. She falls unconscious and is placed inside a bag, from which she's then put inside a cage along with other animals inside the truck. Surly, the last man standing, goes to the territory of the white mice and calls for their attention. The mice immediately surround him and take him to go meet their leader, Mr. Feng. Surly is beaten up a little, and he asks Feng for his assistance to fight off the people at the park. But the mice leader refuses, telling Surly that they, too, used to live in a particular park but were maltreated when the humans turned it into a golf course. He narrates that they had to move to the city and learnt combat skills from the humans whom they lived amongst. But Surly doesn't relent and presses forward with his request, stating that they are all animals and that Fang should exert his revenge on Muldoon. He convinces Fang the animals must work together, regardless of whether they are from the city or a park. At the park, Andy regains consciousness inside the truck and sees the other animals inside with her. Soon, the vehicle starts moving, carrying them to where they would be disposed of. Along the way, Surly appears in front of the vehicle, and the driver increases his speed to crush him. Suddenly, the army of mice being led by Fang run out from the corner, pushing the truck in their numbers and tossing it across the road. The vehicle tumbles for some time and the cages where the animals are being held all fly out and are set free. The park animals are introduced to the city mice and they all head back to the park to finish their fight. 
They arrive at the park and begin dismantling the equipment which was installed, overwhelm the humans, destroy all the rides, and attract the attention of the police. Amid the violence, Precious finds Frankie laying on the floor, alone and sad. She approaches him and apologizes, confessing that she has also developed feelings for him because he is a good person. Frankie forgives her and they both begin acting affectionate toward themselves. Now that the pair have made up, Heather sees them from afar and orders one of the exterminators to tranquilize them, but he misses. He and Heather go after the dogs, shooting after them, but due to the interference of Surly, Andy and Buddy, Heather gets shot. The tranquilizer knocks her out and the exterminator runs away for fear of what the mayor would do. In the heat of the fight, the mice take one of the exterminator's clothes from him and fill it up to fight the other ones. The men all run away from the park and the police arrive at the scene. But Muldoon knocks him off and tries to escape the chaos using a hot air balloon. But Surly goes after him but falls off, so Buddy takes him to a roller coaster, which they both ride to catch up with Muldoon. After a bumpy ride, Surly makes it on top of the balloon and he and the mayor engage in a long battle. After some time, Surly opens up Muldoon's umbrella, which then takes the evil mayor away from the balloon. He falls on top of a bouncy house and is attacked by Feng and his colony. Muldoon tries to pull away from the mice attack but is stopped by the police, who handcuff him and take him to their car. Heather and the chief exterminator are also out inside another police car where the little girl fights the man for shooting a dart at her. As their vehicle drives off, the sergeant announces that Liberty Land is shut down for good. Andy drives a truck over the remaining structures in the park and the animals begin their celebration. Several months later, the good people of the city help to rebuild Liberty Park to its former glory. After the park is rebuilt, Fang and his colony stay as they continue practicing their combat skills. While Precious and Frankie have puppies, Surly takes Andy on a ride with Precious to rob a nut cart. This is where the movie ends. Thanks for watching. See you soon with a new movie recap. Till then, stay happy and chill out.